Is this one rack to fit them all? Part of the reason seat packs gained so much popularity was how universal they were. And perhaps new bike standards over the past 10 years have slowed the progression of racks. But with some unique designs in rack technology recently, we've come back around to using racks. And with this Old Man Mountain Elkhorn rack, a lot of problems have been solved. So let's dive into it. This video is supported in part by Surly Bikes. Surly makes serious steel bikes for people that don't take themselves too seriously. They make bikes that are versatile and durable that can be dressed up or down for commuting, bikepacking, ATBing, gravel grinding, or whatever you call fun on two wheels. With 15 original dirt-friendly platforms, they offer something that fits just about anyone for any style of riding. So for more about Surly, you can click on this card right up here, and it's also linked in the description below. The Elkhorn Rack is an aluminum front and rear compatible rack that comes in two sizes, short and tall. I tested the short, which has a clearance to fit 27.5 by three inch tires or 700C by 38 millimeter tires. The tall rack has a clearance of 29 by 3.25 inch tires. The rack mounts to bikes that have a variety of eyelet mounting configurations, but can also fit bikes without eyelets with aftermarket through axle or quick release fit kits. The rack comes with two sets of struts, mounting hardware, and the rack itself is made up of a 13 millimeter tubing and a wide yet short deck on the top that measures out to 100 millimeters by 266 millimeters. The rack comes with three pack mounts on each side of the tubing for additional water or cargo storage. The rack also has a weight limit of 25 pounds and comes in at 660 grams, which is heavier than say, the steel tumbleweed T-Rack, but the Alcorn has a bit more versatility, which we'll get into. So I found the rack to install rather easily. However, the rack does come completely disassembled. And this is because its mounting configuration is a little different depending on where it is mounted. If it's mounted on the front, the two uprights need to be on the inside of the deck. If it's mounted on the rear, the uprights are mounted on the outside of the deck. Another note here is that the mounting plate, which is this area right here, is also angled. So no, they are not bent. They're meant to be that way. So just make a note of that. Tire clearance is also a very important thing here, especially with the two height options, the short and the tall. You will need to keep tire and wheel flex and of course mud clearance in mind. Logan got this rack and tested it first and he went with the short because he didn't want the rack to sit three or four inches above the wheel, which I totally get, yet this one still does with this 27.5 inch wheel and the mounting configuration. So you're going to get a lot of variability between each bike. The fit of the Elkhorn on the Ghost Grappler here was solid, but definitely not perfect. The upper mounting point on the Ghost Grappler fork is lower than I would have liked, which makes for a less than ideal strut mount position. But it worked without issue. And while I could have bent the struts to fit the upper mounting position on this fork right here, I wanted to keep them straight so I could fit other bikes. When I mounted it on the rear of the bike, it sat a little higher, which not only looks a little weird, but it also affects the ride when loaded down. The overall beauty of using a rack is, well, simplicity and ease of installing and uninstalling, but I think it also attributes to a lower center of gravity, which I think helps the performance of the bike. The struts are also a little different than your typical rack struts, obviously in the shape, but they do a better job of bending and are more adjustable paired with the mounting plates attached to the rack. There seems like infinite mounting options between the struts and the plate, which truly makes this rack so universal. So I tried the rack up front on my Salsa Cycles Cutthroat and it indeed was a bit tight and certainly does not pass the enough clearance category for mud or flex. So the Cutthroat would be a good candidate for the tall version of the rack, or it would also be a good candidate for the axle mount, which would probably lift the rack up about an inch, which I think would be a good fit, although I have not tried or tested this. However, because of the configuration of mounts near the dropout on the Cutthroat, when I mounted it on the back, it sat much higher than the front and worked just fine. So one thing to note here, the rack 
does work with seat post clamp mounts. So Salsa's post lock mount, rack lock mount, or the Mr. Fusion mount, or even Old Man Mountain seat post clamp. But there will be pretty drastic bends. So Old Man Mountain recommends bending the struts to help alleviate any stress, especially if they are installed on an eyelet of a carbon frame. So overall, the rack is super stable. It's really stiff and has a really solid feel when mounted on the front or back. The rack deck is a bit wider than most of the racks that I've used, but it's never gotten in the way while maneuvering the bike. Obviously, every bike will feel and ride differently, but when I threw it on the front of this Ghost Grappler here, it felt very grounded and it actually helped with slowing down the steering a bit, which is something I really like with my bikes. Throwing it on the back of the Ghost Grapper had similar feelings I get with most of my racks. It's noticeable when loaded down, but also does not truly change the way the bike rides too, too much. The Elkhorn has a really unique deck and actually all Old Man Mountain racks have this, which will not only act as a fender, but when you have a bag, a dry bag, it won't get all nasty from whatever you're running over. That is something I have found to be somewhat of an annoyance with racks. Uh, and I do think that that's probably where that extra weight comes in with this rack versus the Tumbleweed T-Rack. The rack also comes with holes to mount a bag such as this one from North Street Bags. This is an eight liter bag made out of EcoPack fabric with a nice plastic kind of stiffener throughout to create its shape. I tested it out with a variety of things, but simply strapping this bag to the rack up here made me just want to go straight to the liquor store, pick up a sixer, ride to the top of a hill, and enjoy a brew. And there's something about front racks and sixers. I don't know what it is, but it seems to go hand in hand. So back to the question at hand here. Is the Old Man Mountain Elkhorn rack really one rack to fit them all? Because each bike is different and each mounting point is too, it's more like two racks to fit them all. And if you need a bit of customization, there's fit kits to make it work. While it's not universal, it's pretty darn close. And the fact that this rack can be mounted both front and rear is a real winner in my eyes. Not to mention, it's still rather light for its weight capacity of 25 pounds, and it comes with a lifetime warranty, all for 148 USD. So what do you all think about the Old Man Mountain Elkhorn Rack? Leave a comment in the comment section below. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and if you haven't already done so, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell. And if you wanna help support us a little bit more, you can do that by signing up for the Bikepacking Collective. I have a link provided below with more details.